West Wales in the United Kingdom. I've always been a keen amateur apple grower and six or seven years ago I became interested in having a go at apple breeding. I began like others simply out of curiosity sewing up a handful of pips from a random apple just to see how they fared. The next year I tried my hands at a, a few crosses on trees in my garden using known parents after this, I got a lot more serious and involved and refined the techniques I was using so that over the last two or three years I performed around 80 crosses resulting in 400 to 500 seedlings each year. I'll probably stick at this level of production until the space runs out in my garden, but who knows. The series of short videos I've produced describes the exact procedures I use from forming crosses through to germination of pips and the care of seedlings that grow from these pips over several years. I hope that these videos may be of some assistance to you in increasing your own success rates. Thank you for watching. This is the kit you'll need in order to perform crosses. First you've got a a small pair of cosmetic tweezers with flat ends. Use these for removing the anthers from the flowers that you're going to designate as female flowers. Then there's some small muslin bags about four inches long, three inches wide with one open end and you use these to cover and protect the uh, female flowers both after you've removed the male parts and after you've hand pollinated them and also the male flowers you're going to designate to produce pollen in order to prevent insects and other well insect, particularly bees and other pollinating insects from getting access to your flower and potentially contaminating them with the pollen from varieties that you're not interested in. And then we've got some small uh, tags, bead tags that you use to close the um, ends of these bags off and also to identify the number or nature of the cross you've made. Small containers, little plastic containers for example, in which you put the flowers that you've, you're going to use for the male pollination, the female plants, while you're carrying them from the designated male trees round to the trees that you're going to use as females, otherwise you tend to drop these little flowers. Then finally a notebook where you record when you've done the crosses, what the female is, what the male is and um, the identification in terms of numbers of beads etc etc. A hand lens, a small hand lens for example a times 10 one is useful for close inspection of the state of the flowers you're going to use, particularly the uh, state of ripeness of the anthers. In other words, whether they are actually shedding their pollen yet and it can be used to pollinate or if you've got to wait another day or two. And finally, you need access to two different varieties of apple. I drew inspiration from a number of sources, books, videos posted on YouTube, and I recommend anyone who's interested in taking up apple breeding checks out 
videos posted by Stephen Edholm, Marcus Cabelt, and Nigel Deacon in particular. Stephen Edholm is based in Northern California, and his evolving series of skill cult blogs and videos describing his amateur apple breeding project is hugely informative and full of great information. Marcus Cabelt is the founder and breeder of the Swiss company Libera. This is a fully commercial organisation, but his series of videos is also packed full of tips that are relevant to the small-scale apple breeder. Lastly, Nigel Deacon, who's based in the UK, has compiled a really useful online resource describing apples, varieties, cultivation, and including practical guidance on how to hand-cross apples.